Hello Christian and welcome to the Creative Experience. It's great to have you here today. I've been really excited to meet you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your role and give us a little bit of backstory about uh, Lambert's Glass. So my name is Christian Bayerl. Uh, I'm the managing director of Lambert's Glass Hütte in Waldsassel. Um, and I started 25 years ago uh, as a trainee. My dad also used to work for the company for 58 years and I just recently uh, get informed that my grandpa also joined the company before. So I'm almost third generation. The factory is uh, more than 100 years old. We employ 70 people. Uh, we are an absolute uh, specialized uh, glass manufacturer. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about your team. You say you have 70 people working with you. You have a team or teams of specialist glass blowers. How long does it take for a glass blower to become a specialist and to become great at his job or her job? Usually, the glass blower who has the longest experience uh, at the factory, he becomes the boss of all the glass makers. Um, we call him Hüttenmeister. So he's the master of the production and he's above all the teams. And the, the current uh, Hüttenmeister we have have an experience of more than 40 years. So you have six teams of glass blowers, and within each team, how many glass blowers do you have? About four, but it really depends on the product. We do speciality flash glasses where we need more than 10 people to produce it. So Christian, I'm really interested to learn more about the different ways in which your glass is used, the different markets. So I'm imagining you've got architectural glass that will use your glass in a certain way, and then you've got the artist market. You also have the conservation market. Uh, that's exactly correct. Uh, these are the three markets uh, we work on. And the uh, conservation or restoration market uh, includes functional old historic windows. Uh, for this market, we produce mouse blown sheet glass, mouse blown cylinder glass in hundreds of varieties. Um, additionally, we carry a big stock for restoration works of stained glass windows. So probably we have the perfect match uh, of your missing uh, glass piece available in stock. Uh, but on the other end, we can manufacture it according to your sample uh, exactly. Uh, second market is the uh, art market. We cooperate a lot with the studios and the artists who want to create something new, something special. Um, they use the traditional product, but they are looking for something special, something individual. And that's one of the major capabilities of Lambert's, that we can create customized glass, colors, structures, shadings. Lambert's focuses more on architecture and design. We want to talk to architects. We want to talk to designers. We want to promote the material. And in the end, they always need professional studios to realize the projects. So can you tell us a little bit about maybe some of the challenges that you face with the art glass? Because the, the colors are spectacular. Do you have any difficulties in maybe sourcing some of the raw materials? And what, what's the most challenging glass to make? That's a good question. So it's the melting process is a really challenging uh, daily process. And every single day we have a different situation. So the weather influences the melting process. So the melting process we do, we have a very special one. Every day we melt 18 different colors at two separate furnaces and the climate uh, outside has an influence about the melting uh, uh, process and the color next to the other color influences the other color. So even if we do the same color tomorrow again, it's a different situation. 
we have to react individually every single hour. So, but the melting process starts with getting the raw materials and the raw materials are very special. So when our melting master, who is here in second generation, he's my age, I went to school with him. Uh, when he starts at nine in the morning, he makes a quick tour through the production, listening to the, to the glass blowers, if everything is fine, especially to the person called Hüttenmeister. Uh, and then he went to the production meeting where we decide about the colors we produce on the next day. And uh, the plan can be that we go from green to blue, from red to yellow. So it's really challenging every day. Um, you always have to adjust, even with the simplest products. Uh, and finally, at the end of the day, uh, at 12 o'clock midnight, we have to release or refuse uh, the batch for production the next day. So, um, Christian, I've got to ask you a little bit about um, the energy crisis that we've all gone through recently across Europe and across the world. It's been a big problem for all of us. And I imagine at Lambert's, you're very energy hungry. You use a lot of energy to create um, this glass. So um, how has that been with you over the last couple of years dealing with these challenges? In 2020, uh, we decided to build a new furnace. Um, we finally installed in 2021 and uh, it saves a lot of energy, uh, but especially it makes our process much more uh, efficient. Of course, price matters, but the product we produced is not being used in tons, but it makes a difference in quality. It makes the project what it is. And that's finally uh, what stained glass stands for. It's about quality. And we have to take care about the resources. But that's what we did before uh, this situation. And that's what we have to carry on. I'm optimistic that uh, all the efforts we do every day help us uh, to look into a positive future. So tell me a little bit about um, some of the new products that you're working on. Are there any new things that you're bringing to market? For us, sometimes new products are old products. We get samples of glass in a quality we have never done before. So we have to develop it for just one pitch. So every single day we produce new products. We additionally are going to standardize a streaky series which calls called English streaky. So in a couple of weeks we can uh, tell you more about that. Uh, I can show you here at my left hand uh, a glass or a mock-up we uh, designed for an architect. We see color difference where nobody else sees color difference. That's important. The last final nuance. In this case, it was a big nuance. They wanted to use it for staircases. Again, not our core business. We are always thinking about windows. Not always, quite often. More and more, we look to the left and to the right. So we offered them 10 different varieties of marble glass they could choose from. And finally, and we almost knew it before, they decided for that double-fleshed opaque, which is really great. Uh, Christian, tell me a little bit about the other panel I can see. Is that a, is that a sample panel for some specialist glass as well? A production sheet uh, we produced for the Big Ben in London. We talked a lot about color in a white glass. And we talked a lot about translucence. And we had to combine all that for the situation at Big Ben. The situation during daylight with the reflection and the appearance of the opaque uh, glass, but we also had to consider the situation during night times when they backlighten the clock tower of Big Ben. And we didn't expect that this is such a big deal, but it was a big deal and we tried really fancy things uh, to, to, to deliver what they, yeah, what they ask. 
And finally, we reached target and we produced more than 1,000 production uh, sheets of customized opaque glass for the clock tower of Big Ben. And we are very, very proud about that because even my kids, my little kids, with three or four years old to that time, they knew, uh, yeah, they knew the Big Ben. And uh, everybody knew the Big Ben. And we have been allowed to produce our glass from this little company in Waldsassen to be installed in the Big Ben. And that's just such an honor in both projects. Traditional stained glass uh, studios have been involved. They are necessary. So it's a lot of cooperation and we have to take care that we don't lose information. I think much more important than creating new products is losing knowledge, losing information and especially, especially stop to communicate, to talk, to take time to speak to each other. So Christian, uh, recently in the world of stained glass, the news has broken that the UK stained glass market has been put in the endangered list by Heritage Crafts. Um, did that news surprise you? No, and I think it's really a chance to shine a spotlight on our profession, uh, to pay, make people aware what they have access to right at the moment, but also to keep that at the level uh, for future. And we especially have to think about the next generation. We have to uh, get young people uh, into our business. And if young people would be aware about this creativity of our business, I'm sure we would have a lot of interested people. Uh, so how to attract young people? I think there are a lot of options from my perspective, uh, and especially talking about the UK, the Brian Clark works are really, really brilliant. It's the stained glass windows, but it's also the other replication. I'm so glad that you mentioned the Brian Clark show. I, I, I saw it um, in the last couple of weeks and was absolutely blown away by it. Your glass is front and center. It's the most brilliant showcase for what colored handmade glass can do and what it can bring to an interior, how it creates an atmosphere. That beautiful a uh, 42 square meter screen is absolutely awe-inspiring and it really is about the quality of the material. It's exciting. Uh, I have no other word for it. It's exciting. It's really, really uh, extraordinary. And the way he used it, it's awesome. Uh, it attracts people and I think it helps the stained glass business to reinvent uh, ourself. So Christian, can we talk a little bit about the future of uh, glass and how it's used in the applications? What particular things are you excited about moving forward? I'm excited about a lot of things. So at the first step, uh, we want to make sure that we keep the quality, variety and quantity. Uh, yeah of our products at Lambert's and to, yeah, invent new designs, to probably invent new products uh, together uh, with our partners. Christian, it's been absolutely fantastic spending time with you today and uh, getting your response to current events and hearing about the future of Lambert's and the future of glass. So thank you so much for joining me today. It was a real pleasure. Derek, thank you very much.